everyone, Nary here from Drake Lane Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Far Beyond the World. So the last place we left off, we had uh, uh, Rannick had just left us, and we were spending a little bit of time with Vool. You know, he's he's being nice at least. He bought us some good food too. So, all right, guys, let's jump right back into it. Please let me entertain you for the next 20 minutes, and let's jump right in. Alarm Chan, you're up. All right, off we go. Okay. Despite the outhouse being one of the low points of my stay here, my mood quickly lifts up. The smell filling the room is so reminiscent of my first breakfast in this house. I dry myself off and I sit at the table to be greeted with a single plate. There's two sunny side ups and a large marbled slice of ham. You're not going to eat? I don't breakfast until noon. Why's that? I raise my brow as he passes me one of the yesterday's rolls. I like to work up an appetite. Also, the late night feasting keeps you full throughout the night and morning. This makes sense. Doesn't sound healthy, though. Look at him! He looks pretty freaking healthy to me. He gives me a mocking gaze, spreading his arms and inviting me to inspect his musculature. Is that the guy who gets sick because of flowers and dust? I shake my head and simply dig in. <laughs> Vol waits patiently, helping himself to a mug of ale while I finish my meal. I down it as fast as I can, washing it down with a cup of water every now and then. I kind of miss other things. Maybe not sodas, but tea or coffee would be nice. Between the water, wine, and ale, there doesn't seem to be much variety. You're done dallying? He asks, finished with his drink. Yes. I exhale, swallowing my last gulp and putting down the cup. The wolf then uses what little water was left in the bucket to douse the fire, and I put out the, and I put out the candles. I rush to the rack and grab the green cloak. Once it's fastened around my neck, I carefully pick up the dandelion and place it on my pin. Vool only gives me a curious glance, but doesn't inquire further, and I'm glad for it. It really doesn't feel, really don't feel like explaining this. As we leave the house, the sky slowly fills with teal and pink hues, announcing the incoming sunrise. I don't think I've ever started a day this early. If so, it definitely wasn't a norm. We both hop over the uneven step, with Vool trying to contain it, uh, with, a, with Vool trying to contain an approving smirk. We don't talk on, we don't talk on our way towards the village center, most likely on the account, on the account of wolves slowly emerging from their domiciles. I, no I notice smoke already rising from Vithyr's chimney, and there's an undeniable smell of baked bread spreading across the street. I catch a glimpse of the male in his doorway and nod to him respectfully, to which he only smiles. As dignified as I try to be, I stumble on a little stone and nearly lose my footing. I send Vool grabs my arm mid-flight, saving my face from hitting the dirt. The embarrassment is empowered by the bombastic laughter of the brown male reaching me from his house. Despite my little trip, we don't stop and Vool pulls me forward, interrupting a little massage I was giving to my toes. Walking barefoot has really done a number on my soles. The roads are mostly packed to earth with little debris on them, but still my feet ache a little. Considering I have just gotten a silk dress, asking for those shoes might sound a bit ungrateful and needy. Moreover, as far as I can see, none of them wears any. I wonder if they even know what shoes are. As we enter the village center, I am quite surprised at how animated the place has become just at the break of dawn. There's a myriad of activities with wolves attending to their, to their respective trades. I can see a fishmonger set up in his shop, merely plopping down boxes of fresh catch. Did he fish at night? I see flocks of chickens and ducks being chased from paths by the, someone pushing a wheelbarrow filled with chopped wood. On the far side, a pair of wolves carry a heavy crate towards what I assume is a smithy. The place is bustling when everyone's rushing about their business. Well, here, keep your yapping to a minimum. The black male mutters as we approach his shop and I nod. It's not like I planned on being chatty right in the heart of their village. Especially with the stockades in the field of view. Mm, meat! As you enter his shop, I look around. First time seeing the place from the inside. There are two counters on opposite sides, both suited for chopping and cutting meats. Different hooks hang from the ceiling, holding up joints and carcasses of recent kills. It's not exactly an appealing workplace, if I'm to be honest. I know you're a talker, but this area gets quite busy. You can whisper to me while you're facing the back wall. I have good hearing. Just don't open your head hole when facing the town. I give him a bemused look, but nod in agreement. There's plenty of work to do, so having another set of paws will be appreciated. Uh, okay. Right. I've set a workstation for you here. He points to the back wall where the other counter is. It'll keep you from drawing too much attention. Speaking of... He grumbles as his ear twitches. He looks back towards the village center, and I must admit, his hearing is quite impressive. Though, there, though still some distance from us, I notice the familiar wolf guards approach, carrying what looks like a medium-sized boar. 
Ah, look at them handsome boys. Hey there, Vulgar. Got a delivery for you, says the male that kept watch over me. He has a wide smile, but quickly locks his startled gaze with mine. The black wolf inspects the kill as they hold it in their paws, while, while Drerick keeps eyeing me out. More luck than brains. A bit to the left and you'd rupture the gallbladder. <laughs> Sorry, was trying my hardest. The other wolf snickers, but Vul does not find it amusing and issues a subdued a subdued and issues of subdued a subdued growl. Try harder next time. That's when he notices Drer's invasive gaze. What are you staring at? Th nothing. The wolf mumbles in response, looking to his friend for help, but the other one simply turns away. That's what I thought. Now get lost. Okay, okay, jeez. I wait until they're out of earshot and whisper discreetly. He's Vithyr's son, isn't he? Aren't those two rough from Ranix pack? Yeah, how'd you know? I can add two and two together. I shrug. I thought they would have gone with him. No, Ranek left alone. Why? I ask, rather unsettled that he is out there on his own. It's a scouting mission. Ranek has higher stamina than most. They would slowly slow him down. Hmm. I frown, but before I can dwell on this, Vol throws me a condescending look. I assume you're squeamish. Yeah? Why? Because I'm about to be elbow deep in this boar's guts. He scoffs and I wince uncomfortably. Oh, yeah, that's not my type of thing. Then fetch me a bucket so you don't have to see it. Okay. I nod and look around. It's by the door. He points and I quickly grab it. Once I place the bucket at his feet, he reaches up to one of the hooks. Right, this is a hind leg. He huffs as he dismounts the slab of meat and carries it to the back table. The limb drops onto the surface with a loud thud, causing the various metal tools to dance. Here's a knife and a cleaver. He points to the side. I need you to remove all the meat from the bone. I've never done this before. You have two paws, don't you? He scoffs. All you need to do is chop and cut. It doesn't matter if you shred the meat, it's all going through the grinder anyway. He shrugs and walks back to his own station. Uh, okay. I mutter and look at the massive hunk of meat with doubt. Without much notice, without much choice, I simply reach for the cleaver and begin hacking at the slab. Despite putting a lot of effort behind each swing, I cannot sink the blade deeper than an inch or two. He tries to ignore me for a while, but my labored huffs and grunts finally draw Vool's attention. Seriously, do you have any muscle? Um... I stretch out my arms. What sort of a question is that? I'm all skin and bones. A pup could chop better than that. Here. I gr he grumbles, forcing me back to face the workbench and taking hold of my wrists. Oh no. I'm getting the Rannick treatment again. He squeezes my wrists much more harshly than the Grey Wolf would, but my attention is drawn to his rigid form pressing against my back. I don't even notice when he pulls my chopping arm high up and slightly and slightly behind as I'm getting flushed with embarrassment his warmth seeping through my cloak and skin. What is wrong with me? I'm drawn back to reality as he crushes my wrist, forcing my arm to swing down. With his aid, I can hear the blade sink all the way through into the bone. There you go, see? He smirks, pulling away, and I do not dare to face him. Y yeah I mumble, certain that my face is painted red. I continue with my task, hoping that with each chop the workout I put myself through will either extinguish my blush or at least mask it behind some sweat. Every now and then I can hear some squelch or other sickening sound coming from behind me as Vul guts the boar. I try to stay on my task and keep myself distracted. Despite appearances, hacking at this meat is not as simple as it looks. Ten or twenty chops into my arm begins to numb and burn. I'm going to regret this come tomorrow. Come the morrow? I chuckled myself. I even started talking like them. A loud crunching noise announces that my blade struck a bone. I struggle with pulling it out, but when I finally do, Vul is already standing behind me. Work around the bone, as closely as he can. You, clear, you can clear the rest of the meat with a knife. What is this for? I ask, looking back at him with slight confusion. We'll be making sausages. The wolf shrugs and returns back to his workstation. Oh, uh, cool. A brief smile quickly turns into a cringe, as this time there is a loud, loud long slushing sound. It's almost as if Vul emptied a bunch of wet pellets into the bucket. When another slush, slush of guts reaches my ears, I simply put down the blade and wince uncomfortably. You're such a wimp. The sound was bad enough, but now... Now I feel my innards tie in a knot as the wretched stench of blood and bile envelops the shop. 
It's sweet and sickening. It triggers my gag reflex, and I barely stop myself from emptying my own stomach. Hey, you vomit here, and will have to scrape you off that wall. The wolf growls, and I try to compose myself, but another wave of sweet and festering smell almost pushes me over the edge. So, sorry, just the bleh! Oh, God. I burst through the side door, not even looking where I'm going. Taking shelter in the back room, I rest myself against the wall, away from the stench and gore of the meat shop. Vul's mocking laughter only empowers the uncomfortable position I found myself in. Quit your whining! I'm nearly done. He calls out, but I do not dare step outside just yet. I take a few rattled breaths to settle my stomach, but it's a struggle as my diaphragm seizes up and does not let go, almost as if it turned to stone. Fuck! This is literally the worst day of my life, and I get to say that without being overly dramatic. Considering all I can remember is the last seven days, even including being stabbed, this is the worst. I finally feel the cramps let up and my breathing is less restricted. There's still a large lump stuck in my throat, but I don't think it's going to go away anytime soon. Once I feel I've regained control over my, over my gagging, I slowly step outside. I try to look unfazed, but Vul's sniggering leaves no doubt, I th no doubt he found my little stunt amusing. The smell of iron still lingers in the air, and worse yet, I can now taste it, which is disturbing to say the least. I muster all my willpower to remain strong and grab my cleaver to return to work. I try to act casual, but it isn't easy. It isn't easy. I really need a distraction, so I decide to engage him. Do you like what you do? Oh, let's take it, guys. Ay, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Tired from work. Ugh. The male grumbles, his amusement suddenly gone. I mean, was this your choice, or...? I hear more yapping than chopping, piglet. He points out in an irritated tone, and I resume my task. Sorry. I hack at the meat, working around the bone as instructed. I manage a few swings before another slush of guts makes me whimper. My breathing speeds up, which in turn causes me to inhale more of that repugnant stench. I cover my face, trying to calm myself down before I will unleash my own bile all over the place. No, it wasn't my choice. Fool breaks the silence, drawing my attention away from my nausea. Hardly anything is anyone's choice here, but I learn to enjoy it. You enjoy the gore? I mumble through the hand covering my nose, causing the wolf to scoff. I enjoy the food, stupid. Preparing meat, smoking, roasting, it's extremely satisfying when your job is appreciated. And no one appreciates anything more than a good meal. Yeah, that sounds about right. I try to nod, however, that his little, this little experience is effectively obliterating my appetite. I really cannot think about food right now, otherwise I will hurl. I'm sure there are other things to appreciate about you. What did I say about that chopping? He cuts me off and I nod hastily, again hacking at the slab in front of me. Oh, Orion, you slick devil. Eventually, the peak of my unease passes as either the smell is carried away by the wind or my nose gets used to it. For the next half, for the next half an hour, I keep, at, I keep at detaching large chunks of meat from the leg until I'm left with a fleshy stump that's no longer suitable for the cleaver. Hey, <laughs> yay! Hmm, not bad. Vul nods with approval, inspecting my work once, we heard the, once he heard the hacking stop. Now, get the knife and try to salvage as much as you can. I nod and proceed to do as I'm told, filleting the meat. The blade is extremely sharp, and it just glides through the sinew as if it were butter. It really doesn't take long, and eventually I can see white bone shine beneath the thin layer of flesh. Might have been an hour or so since I started, and it's hard to believe I managed to butcher an entire hind leg of a boar, but here we are. Vul approaches me, wiping his bloodied paws into a cloth he, care he tosses carelessly aside. You left some at the ends. He scrutinizes my work, pointing to the joints. It's hard to get the knife around there. Still pretty good for a first time. I smile at his praise. You should I try some more? Nah, I'm gonna boil it down anyway. He waves his paw at me. For soup? To clean them, you idiot. What do you need to clean bones for? To grow them into bone meal. We use it as a fertilizer or to make glue. We've got several tanners in the tribe. They require loads of the stuff. Huh. The more you learn. Vul lifts the now gutted boar carcass and takes it into the back room. I just stand there in the shop front looking at the disgusting bucket filled with what used to be the beast's innards. Despite my nose getting used to the smell, the look of the glistening organs bathed in blood and bile makes my own bowels churn. Ah, this reminds me of that scene from that old Z-grade movie, um, Abomination. Or I think it's called The Abomination. Um, basically, is this dude who finds out that there is a tumorous... Like a tumorous monster that's like growing under his bed 
and it like attaches itself to him and he starts feeding it like blood and then he eventually starts moving on to animals and he starts moving on to people and he's got like just like organ just he's just got like buckets full of organs and shit that he's just feeding to it really nasty gross Kind of also very silly, silly Z-grade horror movie. I think you can watch it for free on YouTube. Once again, guys, the name of that one is The Abomination. It's an old 80s movie. Anyway, despite my nose getting used to the smell of the... Okay, I already went that. Not to mention all the flies that began to together to feast on this gore. Once Vool is back, I look at him pleadingly. What are we going to do with that? Chuck it somewhere? Are you insane? That's still food. He scoffs at me and I shudder. Ew! What do you think that kidney pie was made out of? It weren't beans, kid. He laughs, and despite having a point, I cannot help but notice entrails mixed in there as well. But... Those are guts. What do you think we'll use as casings for our sausage? Wh what? Gross! I jump up with a terrible scowl, throwing my gaze away from that grotesque bucket. All I can hear is the wolf's tail giving an energetic swish as Vul enjoys a rather playful growl. He enjoys a rather playful growl. Oh, this is going to be fun. He lifts up the bucket and walks towards the back room. Come. He places it on the table and pulls up a bowl. I try not to look as he rummages through the, through the contents. Every now and then I hear a wet slop of an organ dropping into the separate dish. Oh god, that's disgusting! Is it over? Is it over? Okay, thank god. Oh god, that was bad. Oh god, it was disgusting. That should be everything. He nods, looking back to me with his bloodied paws. You'll get to sort out the intestines. No, no, I protest as my eyes dilate in terror. Man up, piglet. He scoffs as he walks past me back into the shop. I have a business to run. It's not as hard as it looks. My legs refuse to budge from the spot, but I know I don't have much choice in the matter. I really don't want to look like, look like a stuck-up and technically Vool is doing me a favor. If I want him to warm up to me, I need to stop acting like a princess. I muster all the courage I can to approach the bucket. Long strands of white ribbons fill the murky water, almost looking like eels. The smell forces me to cover my nose once again. This is disgusting. Disgusting! Vol's snigger, Vol snigger draws my attention as he returns. He grabs one of the knives laying on the table and approaches me. Here, let me show you. I watch as his paw dives into the bucket, retrieving one end of the gut. He pulls it out and presses the blade into it. It's not hard, but all you need to do is use the back of the knife. The wolf showcases how he places it against the intestinal wall. As you press and pull, everything comes out on its own on the other end. I watch in discomfort as the contents of bloating the gut move down towards the bottom of the bucket. Your turn! He passes the knife to me and I swallow heavily. I take a moment to finally take hold of the blade. Vul steps aside and looks at me with an intent gaze. God, I'm going to be sick! I mutter, trying to replicate what he did. Indeed, it's not a hard task, but it has to be one of the most unpleasant things one can do. Especially how the water gets murkier the further along my task I get. And the stench. God, the stench is worse than a sewer. I'm serious. This smells like shit. I protest again, causing the black wolf to laugh. What do you think is inside of it? No! I blurt out in panic. I've been so stunned by this grotesque spectacle that the obviousness of the situation completely eluded me. You've lost your damn mind! I snap, I snap, throwing the knife into the bucket with a splash. The wolf raises his brow at me. How old are you? You're acting like a pup. Age has nothing to do with it. This is absolutely revolting! He gives me a patronizing stare, but quickly a sadistic smirk appears on his muzzle. You didn't seem to mind when I brought you the sausage. Oh, no. I stumble back. My innards turn anew as if I got punched in my gut and I have to grab my mouth. Covered in the slick gore, the repugnant stench is brought right into my nose, and a real strong gag rocks my body. I wasn't joking. I will kill you if you soil my workshop. He issues, a, he issues another, less playful growl. If you need to hurl, do it outside. We're handling food in here, kid. Get a grip. My watery eyes lock with his serious gaze. He's right. I try to contain myself, although it's not an easy task. The wolf throws me a cloth napkin and walks towards the doors. Walks towards the doors. Okay. Here, clean yourself up and get back to it. The sooner you'll do it, the faster you'll be done with it. Have fun fishing for your knife. He winks and disappears into the front, to the shop front. I look begrudgingly as he leaves, throwing my defeated gaze into the muddy bucket. I sigh and simply dive in. This has to be the most distasteful task I could ever imagine, but 
but I simply keep at it, pushing the blade and scraping the contents of the gut back into the bucket. Time ceases to matter, be it five minutes or an hour. It all feels like an eternity. The workshop has become my own personal bad place. Once I'm done, I drop the guts back into the dark waters and place the knife onto the table. I'm just standing there like a moron, thinking how I ended up here. This is not how I envisioned my bonding time with the black male. Eventually, Vool checks in on me, walking in with a curious gaze. He picks up the knife and uses it to fish out the gut and pull it up a little. Not bad. <laughs> oh, I'm going to stop it right there. This is a nasty episode. Oof. Guts and gore and shit galore. <laughs> well, oh my god, it was good. Anyway, guys, thank you, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. This has been another episode of Far Beyond the World. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. And leave a super thanks if you can. It always helps. And until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.